or at a Fujifilm event. Yeah, it's called Create With Us, I think. Mm -hmm. And they're giving out um, gear to try out. I got the uh, Fujifilm X-T5 with uh, a 16 to 80 lens. And I have oops, the X100V, which I know that this is a very popular camera right now. It's actually very hard to get a hold of. It's back ordered for months. So even though we have this on loan, I am very tempted to just run away with it because <laughs> it's just hard to even touch it. So uh, yeah, we're here to uh, test out some Fujifilm gear. I actually, you know, on this channel, I talk a lot about Sony gear. I talk about GoPros, but we actually shoot with Fuji. Uh, in my studio, I actually use an X-T3 to shoot all of the studio uh, videos. We even started our channel talking about Fuji gear. Actually, the first gear videos ever were about Fuji. It's just that later, smaller cameras took off for us better. Yeah, so I've been using the X-H line because the high pit is better for video. However, they started um, deviating the controls more towards like a DSLR type of control. So right now I got the X-H S2 and I actually have been disliking the controls. So now I'm going back to X X-T5 and trying out the normal Fuji controls, see how much I like them. I suspect I like them enough to want to trade my camera, but I don't want to lose money on it. So it's kind of a trap right here. And on this one, you have a fixed lens, which is a really awesome lens. It's like a two f-stop, kind of a pancake wide angle thing. It's very nice. Yeah, and Martin actually had uh, the X100S, which was a couple generations ago. Oh, I really miss so, it. Yeah, so I actually sold that one for you <laughs> to a <laughs> local chef. He actually bought it. So yeah, we kind of regret not having that camera anymore. So we've been thinking about, hey, maybe we want this X100V, but again, it's just been so hard to even try out. But uh, we only have 90 minutes with these cameras, so let's get going and see what we think about them. So my first impressions with the X100V so far, uh, the first thing I've noticed is that they're putting on like these quick release straps and they're actually Fujifilm branded. So this must be new because I don't think that my Fujifilm had this, but you see it's a nice thick Fuji strap and it's got like this little quick release. It actually works the same way that Peak Design does. So everyone is knocking off Peak Design, including Fujifilm it seems. But it's so nice because this is so great for taking off the camera from the strap. And so I like that they're heading in that direction. That was a really nice surprise. Both my X100V and the X-T5 came with it. Uh, the other thing I've noticed is that this X100V, look at the minimal amount of buttons on the back. Like that actually really threw me off. Just how small the buttons are. There's only, you know, four actual buttons like on the black part of it and a very small joystick. And so it's nice because it gives you more grip for your hands, but it threw me off a bit in terms of, you know, setting up the controls. But up top, we've got, you know, two dials. We've got the way that you select your shutter speed and your ISO. We've also got your exposure compensation dial. We've got the little shutter button. And then how you select your aperture is actually on the built-in lens here. So you actually turn this dial to select your aperture. We can go all the way to uh, F2, which is nice. Another thing I forgot about Fujifilm cameras is that you can also select your film simulation. And that's one of the big benefits of using Fuji cameras because they have so many beautiful simulations. So I'm currently shooting on Provia, which is my personal favorite. And um, it's looking really good so far. So I know that the X100 series is a photo-centric camera, but it turns out that it does actually do video too. I just kind of forgot, but it is a little hidden in there, but you can select uh, the video drive. You can actually shoot 4K on it. So we're gonna take some 4K video and see what it looks like. This is a vlogging test now with the Fujifilm X100V. And so again, this is what it would be like if my hand was fully extended, but this one definitely does not have any kind of flip screen on it. So it is a little bit hard to vlog. It's just really not meant to do video. It's meant to do like short little B-roll clips, but I would say definitely not a vlogging camera. What do you think about X100V so far? Oh uh, yeah, I have my old X100 back. It's been so long. I had the old one in 2013 and that's what got me into Fuji. These cameras are so much fun to use but they really are for photography. So I'm going around taking the shots with, on the street and it's range finder so you can anticipate or you can compose like by looking around because you know what's around you. You see the peripheral that isn't in the shot. So that's kind of like a range finder thing. But yeah, it brings a lot of uh, memories because I used this a bunch before. I'm going around shooting with this 600V, I think is this one. And back 
when it was S 10 years ago. I love this camera, but uh, I was a photographer only back then and it could do almost everything I needed, except zoom, of course. But now it um, is that I am a videographer mostly and I do less photo. And so now it comes short for that. I am doing video just to see what it can do, but it's obviously lacking some controls even for that. Uh, the big question, of course, is the stabilization. I need something stable and I need something usually that can be turned around and, and video me. And this is a 35 millimeter equivalent, so then it gets hard. Um, if this camera existed with the features I just mentioned, also like a flip screen, so it would be bigger and expensive and stuff like that, but I would love it because if it still could stay small to fit in a pocket, but do amazing video, even with the flip lens uh, pancake, I would totally buy one of these. What do you think so far? Um, well, I like the controls more, um, as always. For example, they've taken out this button here that switches my type of focus mode. I really like this button. Why did they change it on the XHS? I have no idea. It pisses me off. So now I'm looking for the way to change the video setting, because when I switch to video, it starts doing this global focus, which right now is missing. I like targeted focus. And so now I'm digging into the menu, which is kind of annoying. I will say this, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I know that people don't like Sony menus, but I actually don't like Fujifilm menus. <laughs> Maybe I've just been shooting Sony for too long, but I actually prefer Sony menus, especially with the newer uh, wave of cameras, like the a7 IV, and some of these newer cameras that are coming out. Like to me, the Sony menus are a little bit more intuitive than the Fuji menus. But again, might not agree with that, but that's what I think. Yeah, I totally disagree about that. Yeah. I, I hate the Sony menus so much to the point I won't touch a Sony camera. That's what, and so you haven't used a newer Sony camera that has better menus? Because they suck so much, I don't want to use them. <laughs> yeah, this is our behind the scenes of uh, what goes on when we're filming our gear videos. <laughs> Shooting mostly street photography and videography because that's really what's around us. But Fuji is actually really good for that. It's always been really fun. So it's nice to be able to go out and do it with a new camera. Um, there's a lot of modes of transportation around us and composing street shots. Um, I like that I have a zoom on and I'm switching between photo and video with ease with this X-T5. It's well done. I've got the X-T5 now with the uh, 16 to 80 millimeter lens, which is a little bit chunkier than uh, the kit lens that we normally use. And we use, we really like that kit lens, but this is actually a really nice lens as well. You know, it's an F4, it's not an F2.8, which is a bit of a bummer, but an F2.8 would be a lot bigger and heavier. For, you know, considering the size and the weight of this lens, I think that it complements the camera body really nicely and it feels really good in your hands. I also really, really like uh, just the feel of this camera and also where all of the controls are. It's a lot more intuitive than that X-H2S and it's closer to my X-T3. So uh, having a lot of fun with it so far. It, um, I also really am enjoying having my zoom lens back. So, you know, for me personally, I like having the ability to zoom in and out just a little bit. So I'm having more fun, honestly, with this camera than I was with the X100V. You guys know how I was saying that there was no zoom on the X100V? Well, it turns out there actually is. So it's actually uh, this little textured part around the lens. It gives you a bit of a digital zoom, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I just found it pretty funny. It wasn't there 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea that that was even there. So that's nice to know. <laughs> so what did you think about what you tried out? So the X100V, I do think it's a really nice photography oriented camera. It's nice that it can do video, but it's definitely intended to just be like a little pocket street camera. And it's nice, but I don't really think it's fitting our needs personally. Not anymore because we're no longer photographers per se. We do more, a lot of video. Yeah. And I miss it, but not enough to buy it, to be honest. So for that reason, we actually really enjoyed using the X-T5. Again, I have the X-T3, which I've used for a long time. We considered getting the X-T4 when it came out, but the X-T5 came out so soon after that, that we were just like, oh, maybe we should get that camera. But you ended up going back to the X-H route. Yeah, so about that, um, I did enjoy the X-T5 a lot. And at first I was like, man, I need it. Um, because I prefer the controls. But then I discovered the screen doesn't flip and there's a few more things to it. Uh, the screen on top as well. So my XHS2, which is a mouthful, <laughs> but it actually does have some qualities on top of the XT5 and 
I'm willing to give it another chance now leaving this event to get more comfortable with it and, and use it. I want to get like really good at it because with the old controls, I just never miss a shot. You know, that's a great feeling where you know everything on your fingertips, you're creative with it, you're flowing. I haven't quite reached that um, level with the XHS2 and I want to actually before I make that judgment. I think the other consideration is that the X-T5 has been out for a little while. Uh, I don't think anything's official about an X-T6 coming out, but at this point, I think we're better off just waiting to see what the X-T6 brings. Uh, hopefully it brings an actual flip out screen. To me, that was the big deal breaker because yeah. I just kind of assumed that the X-T5 had one, but when we figured out it didn't, we were like, oh, well, so I'm actually okay yeah. with my X-T3 for a little yeah. bit then. <laughs> so, yeah, you have that for yeah. the studio and I have the X-HS2 for the field and it mm -hmm. flips and it has all these other video features. So I'm going to take my time with it and come program it the way I want it, get used to it and then realize what to do. So yeah, the game is progressing. Uh, this event was well done. I thought it inspired me and I do want to shoot more. So I've actually been feeling like taking more portraits of our boy at least lately. So we'll go back to doing that. And then I, I want to just get good at Fuji again because I've just been using a GoPro here and there.